All right. Thank you for uh, joining us and sorry, I apologize for the delay. There was a, a public health meeting here with our area leadership and so we're delayed a little bit. Um, we have a, a couple members in the room here. I'm unable to see online. If you could um, sound off one at a time online best as possible so we could take roll, that would be helpful. Ken Pollock is here. Jake Gust is here. Grant Wayland is here. Roger is here. Katie Mastell with the chamber here. Jason Benson, Cass County here. Okay, uh, thank you. I, I count, I think, six of our outreach committee members, which I, I think is enough for a quorum. So that's helpful. Thanks for your patience, everybody. Um, Roger, you're online and um, ready to go in the room here. Oh, uh, Commissioner Steen and uh, Councilwoman Carlson is are at the table. So. Okay, that sounds good. So we're ready to open the meeting then? Yeah, yep. All right, I think we have a we have a quorum and I think everybody's been accounted for. So we'll just go to the next item, which is uh, minutes. Do we have Rick, a motion on the minutes from our Rick last Steen, meeting? Rick Steen moved to approve the minutes. Okay, is there a second? Jake. Okay, Jake seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, motion carried. Next item is a legislature uh, update. Thanks. Rocky, do you wanna give that? Great, thanks Roger. Um, again, thanks for everybody's patience as, as we're switching over meetings a little late. We're just getting the, um, okay, we got it up on the screen now. Hopefully everybody can see it. This is the agenda for those online. Did send an email out with the link to the, the presentation so you can follow along with that. There's also a couple of video links that were uh, completed today that are sent out as well. So either watch them as we're meeting or, or at a future time. Um, but to go as Roger asked to legislative topics, there were several things gearing up for the legislature in North Dakota that starts in January. We had a, a meeting last week in town here with the Water Topics Overview Committee. This is the Oversight Committee in North Dakota. Uh, during the interim session, they travel around the state. And so this is a meeting we've been anticipating for a long time. And it was nice to have legislative leadership and also the State Water Commission and the governor in town for that meeting. A uh, couple things happened. One, there was a, a morning session on Thursday. But prior to that, we did a three hour tour with them, a bus tour. Uh, COVID friendly bus tour out to the construction um, both in town and out at the core site and Joel Paulson who's here as well now and Nathan Borboom were, were our tour guides for that uh, did want to show a couple pictures from that uh, thought it was a, a really neat event you can see the governor there and a number of legislators and water commissioners we had the city of Horace as, as well as Cass County and Fargo leaders and there as well um we in addition you know not knowing if uh, if the tour is going to work out and understanding some members were not able to travel to fargo or were uninterested in traveling to fargo we did put together a virtual tour and the virtual tour is available at fmdiversion.gov tour uh, i don't think we need to, to play it here and given we're a little bit late i was going to show just a, a piece of it but we might skip that but it is an hour long virtual tour it's it's really interesting um, it's also a great thing to share with your constituents if for those who are online um it's neat joel does sort of a he, he might he might leave the diversion authority to take over as a talk show somewhere because he does a good job walking through doing interviews with different subject matter experts so we really appreciated that uh, it was put together um with the intent that you know now that we really have stuff going on and we can get boots on the ground it's a neat neat way for everybody across the state to engage i'm going to back up just slightly. Joel, did you have anything on the 
on the tour that you wanted to talk on or the water topics. I did have one slide with some details numbers. I just wanted to update with everybody, but if you had thoughts on the tour. I thought the tour went really well, Rocky, um, and thanks for your help on that. Rocky really helped to coordinate a lot of the logistics and, and it went off without a hitch. Um, I got a lot of great feedback from legislators. Uh, they love seeing the progress at the federal sites, construction sites that we have, the inlet and the wild rice. Um, so a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of progress since the last time some of those folks had, have seen it and uh, a lot of great feedback from that. Um, the water topics uh, committee meeting was the following day. Um, I did do about a 45 minute presentation with Q and A with the, with the committee. Uh, a lot of great questions. We were able to answer uh, all the questions that were asked of us. Um, and so we provided a lot of great uh, content and feedback uh, back, to the, uh, back to the committee. So uh, overall, um, we got great feedback from the legislators on the, on the tour and the committee meeting. I will mention too, if, if people online could mute their mics in the interim if you're not speaking, just to avoid some feedback we're getting. Thank you. Uh, I'd be remiss if we didn't mention that Colonel Jansen did come up for the tour as well. You can see him in the pictures there. I thought both the Corps and Ames construction at both sites were more than accommodating. It's always tough to have a bus and a, a, you know 20 so people show up on site on a construction site and make sure it stays safe and informative and everything. But they did a great job. Appreciate that. I had the slides slightly out of order, so I apologize for that. It's, it's my fault. Um, this was a slide that Joel presented to the Water Topics Overview Committee. I wanted to bring it up for item A3, actually, and it's on the State Water Commission cost share request. There's a State Water Commission meeting next Thursday, and as we routinely do after the legislature um, passes a bill that has appropriates money, we then have to go to the State Water Commission for the actual contract with the state. So it's never guaranteed until you sort of get through the State Water Commission process as well. Last legislative session in 2019, the legislation included five kind of milestones or check marks we had to reach um, in order before we could request that money. Uh, June 1st, when the state engineer approved the mitigation plan was the last of the five items that needed to be complete and before we could go and request the money. So that explains some of the delay. We're also in a fortunate position where the state's been very generous to us and so we haven't had the financial need, I guess, that you could say to go at that time. So we're up, up now. We did have a reduced request based on the oil revenue in North Dakota um, being far below expectations in their budget. They've asked all projects to um, defer money. I think they've gotten projects across the state to defer about $140 million in total. So you can see here, it's a lot of information on one slide, but you can see that legislative intent from the 2019 was for 66 and a half million. We are just going to be asking for 44 million of it in the contract. And so that's, you know, we make up 22 of the 140 million across the state. Uh, a couple other numbers on there. The top one, the 120 million, if you recall from last legislative session, that was what was our unmet need based on our ask of total intent of 870 million. So legislative intent did go up to 750, but we are at this time still seeking that additional funding uh, commitment. But I, I think maybe to Commissioner Steen's um, purview in that bottom right, we have $83 million left in the state balance. And so we're, we're not in a crucial situation where we're, we're running up against a shortage of state funds, but we've um, been working with Joel closely to understand our future needs so that next session we know what to ask and, and following sessions after that as well. But wanted to run that by, it's sort of a new format to show an awful lot of information in one slide. Iraqi, if I may. Absolutely. Um, we're in preparations right now for the 2021 cash budget uh, and that will be delivered in draft form to the Finance Committee this afternoon. Um, and just to Rocky's point here, that cash budget is uh, completely supported by the cash we have on hand and the expected sales tax um, revenue for next year. So. Roger, that was everything I had under legislative topics, if there were any questions. Okay. Um, I do have something to bring up, but I think we'll wait uh, towards the end of the 
agenda. Uh, anyway, let's um, let's go on to uh, project owners and the update of the Comar and outreach and the mailing activity that's coming up. Sure, absolutely. I think we were all pretty excited to get the, the CLOMER, the conditional letter of map revision approval from FEMA. That's something we've been working on as an entire um, project for a long time. What it really does is it ensures that the project is going to provide the protection to the citizens within the protected area and prevent that expensive insurance mandate. But what it also does is sort of a third party validation of the hydraulic model. So for um, the land acquisition efforts and property mitigation efforts um, underway, we can tell people with a little more um, definite, definite uh, assessment of what the impacts are and what we need to do to mitigate them based on state and federal law. So to start that process, we are working on a, a mailing out to all impacted property owners. So this will be every property that is in one of the four mitigation zones. I think in total that ends up being 701 properties to about 450 different individual property owners. And so we, we're, we're still compiling that. That'll probably go out early next week. We're also, because we always get this interesting thing when we send out a letter, you know, if your neighbor gets one and you don't, it ends up creating a lot of questions. And so what we've done in the past, and we're gonna do it again, is send a you know, less complicated letter. You know, the, the one that we're sending all impacted property owners will have a lot of specialized information about each um, specific information about each property and their impacts. But we're also sending it to every property within those townships. So they'll get, you know, probably just a one page and a map that talks about the project changing in their area and here's where they can find all the information so that nobody doesn't have the ability to find the information. And then the third item on there, we're also sending a letter to all local government units. So that's all the townships and cities upstream. And this will be a, a letter, you know, likely from you know, Joel and the Diversion Authority where Joel makes an offer to attend a future meeting or request to attend a future meeting just to kind of keep that communication that Joel did um, first round of when he was hired when we had the Clomar outreach at the start of the process too. So this sort of circles back now that the Clomar's approved. And I, I think that'll be a good opportunity for Joel to get back in touch with everybody. And, and Rocky, we have started that. I, I already have met with the city of Harwood to talk about the Colmar impacts there. Um, and we are making an offer to meet with uh, all the other political jurisdictions that are contained within the Colmar mailing, which is pretty much everyone you can think of around the area. So <laughs> that effort will get underway this next month here. And maybe I know the land act, the land uh, management committee has the full mailing packet in their materials today. So if you are interested in seeing a sample of that packet, it's it's a little more heavy on the land you know side of things than the outreach side of things. But it's been a, a cohesive effort to get that process done. Any questions on that from those online? So does the Clomer does that? actually um, identify the impacts that the project will have also or does it is it mainly for the people that are benefited from the project you know the the process is really the clomer process is for how the floodplain will change in the future so it, it does work for both um, I, I think it does those two things one it ensures that those we're providing protection to with this project um, if we build the project as we say we will, um, the floodplain will change in a, a positive aspect for them. But it does give us, you know, we've had a lot of discussion over the years on the hydraulic model and the the different things we've done with it. And so this is a good validation of that to go upstream. It's a good milestone moment in time in which to show what the impacts are. You know, there are different things that can still happen to the project that change, you know, slightly. But this is this is a, a good opportunity to go out and and use that to start mitigation. Uh, so Roger, this, a, yeah, go ahead, uh, Jake. Our question is, um, are there any areas outside of the uh, diversion footprint that are negatively impacted? So Jake, you're, it's a good question. Are you, you know, other, are you talking about other than the upstream mitigation area? 
That's correct. So the, the goal of the project is to not impact, you know, those properties, let's say west of the diversion channel. When you, I don't have the maps, I guess I could have put a slide in here of the maps that Joel used with the, his presentation too. It does show a number of benefited areas to the west, you know, or west and north of the diversion channel, just through a, a drainage benefits. That's obviously not the intent, but I don't believe those maps show any area that's negatively impacted to the west. Um, I, I think, you know, at the outlet, there is certainly potential for some there that are being looked at and identified, but nothing significant. Well, it's really important to uh, know if there are any areas because, you know, we've been telling people that uh, there should be no negatively impacted areas outside the uh, footprint. And I just want to make sure that that's still true. Yeah, I think currently our, our our mailings to all impacted property owners do not include any property outside of the upstream mitigation area. But that might be something to explore more um, at Land Management Committee. So I got one more question. Um, did the Comer identify any changes to our mitigation plan that we need to make or how does that, how, how is that interaction between our mitigation plan and the, the Clomer um, Roger, Eric. Yeah. Right, Eric here. Go ahead. Um, good question. So if you do recall, the state engineer in North Dakota did approve the mitigation plan back in early June. And um, that, modeling and mapping that was included in the mitigation plan is um, I'll say consistent with the Clomer model that FEMA approved. Uh, all that, so, so there shouldn't be any, anything significant at all that would need to be updated. Uh, all that being said, through the contested case hearing, there are some edits that need to be made to the mitigation plan um, focused on the Minnesota side. And those are edits that I guess we sort of anticipated would need to be made as it's a living document. And you know, we really hadn't presented version five of the mitigation plan to the state of Minnesota uh, outside of the contested case hearing process. And so they were able to provide some review and provide some feedback that we do need to incorporate in a new version of the mitigation plan but on the North Dakota side, everything that's contained in there is consistent with um, the Clomer model that was just approved by FEMA. All right, Eric, thank you. Any other questions from the committee members? If not, uh, Rocky, are you done then with the Clomer yes. and the outreach and mailing. Yeah, unless okay. Joel, Joel has anything else to add. No, I do not. Okay, well, let's uh, to the communication plan. So as you know, the last several months, we had different sections of the communications plan. And last month, um, presented the committee with the full communications plan, asking for review and, and comments. This is sort of our schedule going forward the next couple of months. We were working under a, a tighter time frame previously to get a completed and approved plan to the P3 proposers. That date has shifted slightly for various reasons. And so we are, are looking for a December final date now, which is, is nice. It gives us a little more opportunity. We did get some comments back in the last week. And so we have not had time to incorporate those into changes. But I think with we would still like further coordination with Joel and his staff and future staff to sort of integrate some of their ideas into the plan before bringing it back for a recommended approval. Um, anticipating at the November meeting with approval at December, I know there was some talk um, of looking at the meeting schedule now that the board meeting, you know, and committee meetings this month. So if those dates stay the same or get consolidated at all, we'll rework our schedule to make sure we get that in time for the, the P3 needs as well. But that's our, our schedule. If you, so we still have time to receive comments if people have comments on it. I'm happy to receive it. Otherwise, I don't have a, anything to go over on it today. All right. 
Well, members, we uh, heard the call out for now is the time to uh, say your piece if you see something you want changed or added. So give us another month here to take a look at it. Next thing is analytics. So the, those uh, in the room here will have a packet of analytics um, and those we sent a link out for the rest of them. Kind of, you know, typical, I think, I, I think with construction going on, there is a slight uptick than what we've seen over previous summers. I think when you look back over the several years, those in the summer, we've really dropped off because people are hopefully doing, you know, more fun things than looking at our website. But with construction going on and more activity, I think it has become more of a, a source of news. I, we also think given our wider outreach on um, social media and elsewhere, that we're trying to drive things back to each other and, and cross-reference each other, that that has helped as well. One new thing you'll see in your analytics is our Facebook page that was launched in early September. I'm trying to remember if I have a date on head, but so it's this month. Um, you'll see up there, we have 100 posts in our first month. That's probably a little excessive, um, but when you, what we wanted to do before we officially launched it is to backfill it with some good information. So when people first went to it, it wasn't just a one post page. So there's a lot of good information, old three questions videos and those sort of things on there. Um, right now we're sitting at 291 followers and 285 page likes. I have not looked at the six people who follow it and don't like it, but that's it's kind of an interesting change in numbers. Um, we continue to get more engagement on that. Um, we did boost a recent post. Um, Joel launched his debut career as a podcast host as well. So he's doing talk show and podcast host, Joe Rogan, watch out. <laughs> um, but it is, the podcast is available on your iPhones. So if anybody has an iPhone or the Android, I'm more familiar with iPhones. So if you open up the podcast app, which is on all iPhones and just type in diversion download, it does come up. That's our, our recent Facebook post. We're hoping to help spur initial likes on the page so that everything we post in the future has a wider wider audience. But if you have not liked Facebook or have not encouraged your friends or your constituents to like it, um, it's really going to try to be our, our source for updating the public on construction updates and different implementation things. We're at the point in the project now where it's not a lot about, you know, talking about studies and sort of selling the project. This is going to try to focus more on implementation tools that the public might be interested in. But appreciate those that have engaged with it. That's always helpful. I know a lot of you have, if not all of you, so appreciate that. Rocky, I have a question. Yes. And you might not have um, the, the data right now. I'm just curious, is the number of um, individuals who go to the website versus even just the number who um, engaged with the Facebook page, if, they're, if you did kind of a comparison, if they're about equal or on a monthly basis, you might not have it right now, and if you don't, that's no big deal. You know, there's some analytics in the thing that you could probably cross-reference, but I mean, this has been up for three and a half weeks, so we probably need to give it a little more time, but we can certainly track that. Um, what I'd like to think is it almost encourages more people to go to the website. You know, you get the update on here, but then you have to click on something to, you know, go watch a video or to get see the study or see the interactive web map. So hopefully they kind of work with each other. I know some, you know, companies and nonprofits and things just use Facebook as their website. And I think that works for, you know, probably 80% of the need, but there are certain things you still need a website for, especially as a public entity, you know, where we host all the packets for all the meetings and all the videos and those sort of, you know, transparency things are, we still need a website to do that as well. But it'll be interesting to track, as you said, uh, what's the use? Yeah, I think it will be um, very informative how many people go and then go from Facebook over to our web. Yeah. web page. Um, it can be kind of that entrance to our mm -hmm. web page. Thank you. And this was uh, maybe our first outcome out of the communications plan too, even though it's not approved. This is one of the things Joel and, and several committee members asked us to sort of put on the fast track. So. And it, it's been positive too. It just I know and we've had a lot of past discussions at this committee over the last seven years or so about you know should we be on Facebook and social media? You know, it's I think social media does get a bad rap at times for being so negative. Um, this has not been a negative experience so far. It's been very positive. Take that for what it is, I guess. 
Okay, thanks for the update, Rocky. Are we going to do the construction video, or are we going to forego that? Um, we are, if that's okay. Give me a second. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. This is not it. Let's see. Um, so the inlet structure video is just a touch longer than normal. It's three and a half minutes. And that's because we got a lot more activity going on. Deal. Um, it's buffering here, so apologize for those online. We're asking for a lot of patience today, I guess, as meetings uh, switch over. <laughs> And then there's a, another one that's just a, for the wild rice river structure that's a little bit shorter. That will pull up here.
is when I thought that was snow and I got really kind of scared. <laughs> Wait a second. So those uh, links have been sent out to the committee as well if you want to use them for any of your constituent update purposes or share them with friends and family. Any other questions on those video efforts? Rocky, how often uh, are we going to do this update? <laughs> You know, it's a good question. We've, we've had that uh, discussion at times and, you know, we've done it the last few months right before the board meeting to try to get up to date visuals. Um, it's probably not something that needs to be done at that frequency at some point here. Um, once, you know, we get, we're not going to watch four or five three minute videos every time. And so, um, you know, I think we could consolidate or shorten as major updates happen. But I think as, as it's still fresh and people don't realize it's happening, I think it's important to keep doing. Um, that would be my recommendation. Obviously, over the winter months, it's probably a, a time break there if things aren't happening as quickly. Um, but that's something we need to look at and talk with Joel and work with his team on the future, on the frequency. Uh, Roger, this is Jake. Uh, you know, the, the pictures are really great this afternoon. Uh, it's nice to see all that concrete emerging out of the ground. There's a lot of changes since the last time. Okay, let's uh, go on to some upcoming items. Uh, General Holland is coming. Yeah, so you can see we switched our agenda up a little bit to try to you know have a, a sort of a report out period on it and then sort of look a look ahead portion of it and you know looking for more input as we look ahead on what should be our our goals and sort of suggested outcomes of each of these meetings coming up so it's not just a report out to the community as a team we really liked the focus groups we did during the communications plan process it was a nice way to get a lot of feedback and kind of meld them together for uh, our work so it'd be nice if we could try to do something like that on a more frequent basis and get some input ahead of the meetings and not just ideas after they happen to implement next time. So this is our, our hope for that. Um, so tomorrow we have Major General Diana Holland coming to Fargo. She's the new um, commanding general of the Mississippi Valley Division, which is the oversight of the St. Paul District. So she'll be in town. I hear she's really excited to come see the project. She's been wanting to get up here. Uh, she's new on the job, but you can see she's got a, a good good history. Uh, she'll be doing a tour of the site with her staff, and then she will be at the board meeting at 3:30 tomorrow. Um, there'll be a you know 20 minute sort of ceremonial type discussion at the start of the board meeting for those on the board or those coming to watch. But I think we're excited anytime we have a, a VIP come. I don't Joel if there's anything else on the general. Uh, no, I don't think so, Rocky. I mean, I, we're fortunate to have her come. Um, so Major General, she replaces Major General Toy, who also came and visited with the board. Um, I think that was about a year ago or so, yep. right? 
Um, but yeah, she's excited to learn uh, more about the project, see the project, uh, have a discussion with the board, meet board members from the uh, local member entities. So, um, so we uh, extended an invite for her to come to the board meeting tomorrow. So I'm excited to, to have her and I think it's, uh, it'll be a great discussion tomorrow. We are planning, you know, we have, so go ahead, Roger, sorry. Oh, I was just going to thank Joel for the update. No problem, Roger. We have been coordinating with the core on media availability with the general, and I think she does have some um, press interviews lined up as well. So we, we've been trying to think of what we can do ahead of time. Um, she seems to be active on social media, as past generals have as well. And so it's always nice when we can sort of cross promote these type of things. If there's no other questions on the general, I could talk about the podcast a little bit more. Yeah, go ahead, Rocky. So I did mention there's the podcast available. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty neat. Um, we brought back Darren Selvig, if you remember, he was on our team a number of years ago, and, and he's just ideal to host a podcast. He's got a great voice, a great sort of manner, and of course his star guest is Joel for the first episode. They do a good job. They sit down. It's on YouTube too. If you want to watch them versus just listen, but we'd ask that you you know use the podcast, subscribe, and it's a, a new format for us for sure. But it was one that is becoming more increasingly popular. And it's great for his, the history of the project. But we'd really like to dive into some of the you know more technical issues that questions that people are asked or Joel gets at different presentations. So we have a future pro podcast planned. Um, several of them planned and we'll see how it goes and we'll have to reevaluate, you know, after a certain period of time. Um, but there's where you can find the podcast. We have a, it's called anchor.fm slash FM diversion. It's a, a site that has links to all the different platforms. So if you like it on Apple or Android or Spotify, whatever you use to, to do that, um, or you can just go to YouTube or Facebook and watch it on our site there. But we're excited about it. It seems. It's uh, getting tougher to reach everybody because, as we we see in news and politics and everything else, everyone uses a different source. And if you don't hit those sources, you totally miss a sector of the population. So. But we'd like to hear if there if we're future podcast topics about the project that you're super interested in, or you hear a lot of questions about that we're missing, that you think would fill a you know. A segment of one of these, you know, five, 10 minute segment for a discussion or at least a question with an expert. That would be uh, great to hear. These are the ones that we've, you know, done sort of the history of the project, how we got, you know, to plan B is, is going to be the next one. Obviously, the, the finances and the cost of the project are always a question. There is a director of engineering, Chris Bakigard, that the public probably generally doesn't know or isn't, doesn't know him as tied to the project. That would be good to have him on there. P3 obviously is an interesting subject that you know takes some effort to to come up with a podcast on how the project works. So that's operations, upstream operations. I know is a constant question. We even got that on the tour as well. I think uh, several times. The mitigation plan, of course, there's a, a whole host of things in the mitigation plan that could be different podcasts themselves and different agricultural mitigation programs. And then in town flood protection continues to be an important topic. But if the committee thinks we're missing something or wants to raise the priority of one item over another, please let us know. Rocky, the more we can talk about the ag mitigation, I think the better it'll be to get that information out there and just and let the general public know that that we are going to take care of the farmers that are going to be impacted and and then also to give the farmers that are impacted an opportunity to to look at the mitigation and and uh, understand it better. So I think I don't think we can preach that enough. Yeah, this Jake, I agree, and I think we should be talking a little bit about the wetland mitigation up in the hump. Uh, the uh, landowners are pretty negative about. Uh, giving up their land for that project, but I think we need to start explaining why it's important to have that wetland mitigation. 
Good ideas. I guess I, I have a question, um, you know, for Roger and Jake. You know, I, I know the agricultural workforce is is generally a radio listenership during the day. Is is podcasts a market that is popular with more rural egg workers? Well, probably this speaking from uh, per, no uh, personal experience, I would say maybe not, unless you're quite a bit younger than Jake and I. <laughs> but uh, it's not something I go to. Okay, that's good. Good. No, what I'm thinking is we just you know if, if we try this, maybe we need to have a, a more education mindset to make sure people understand how to use this, and so you're not just targeting podcast users. You're you're helping trying to, you know, convert or introduce something to people that would be helpful. So that's good to know. Hey, Rocky, this is this is Joel, uh, Chairman Olson. Um, yeah, I think we certainly could add, uh, you know, crop insurance, uh, potential for prevent plant uh, mitigation, uh, flow easement mitigation. I think those are all great topics that show that we're uh, incorporating programs to uh, try to make the farmers whole for the impacts that we have in the upstream mitigation area. Okay, anything else? Um, I do have a couple things to ask. So the, the bus tour was, um, seemed like it worked quite well. It was informative for the, for the group that went out there. Is that, is that something, um, that we should be using as a communication tool to the local people? and also to our actual board members. Um, I think it would be great if we could get a bus tour or boots on the ground for the, for the diversion authority uh, would be great. But also I'm thinking about what about the media? And, you know, we could get maybe a lot of good um, outreach if, if we, took the media out there in a the bus and and gave them an opportunity to take some good pictures and have some good conversation and maybe it should be at the same time as uh, as the diversion authority so that they can ask questions of us and I don't know just something I'd like to talk about and see what the other members think about here. Hey. Chairman Olson, if I can just jump in before we take additional comments. Um, I really like this idea, and I just want to convey to the committee that even I learned some on that tour when Nathan was giving uh, the in-town levy and flood control um, um, work to date. And uh, I just want to note, Nathan did an exceptional job. I don't think he's here today, but he's got a career as a bus tour guide in the future, I think, some maybe somewhere out in Yellowstone. But anyways, um, <laughs> I, 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 think it, uh, I think it's an excellent idea, actually. And I've kind of thought we need to get the board out to see the construction firsthand more. And it's one thing to see it in the videos. It's another thing to stand there on site and uh, be able to ask questions with the, with the folks that are managing the construction. Um, and so it certainly could be something that we do on, on an annual basis or twice a year and, and um, host, a, host a bus tour. Obviously, the, the COVID presented a challenge for the water topics. So we had uh, twice the space on the bus, of course. Everyone had masks on. Oh, I think somebody needs to go on mute again. Could, could you mute your line online, please? All right. So uh, we did take proper precautions. So there is a kind of a limit of the amount of people we can fit on uh, on any one bus, and and you kind of have to all be on the same bus to get the the full effect of the tour. Um, but certainly something that we could look into coordinating. Uh, anyhow, I think it's a great idea. Um, so I'll open it up if there's any other committee members that have any comments on that. Um. I, I think it's an excellent idea too. I, I think it actually needs to be done more than twice a year. Um, I envision um, not just the diversion board, but I also envision um, maybe one time it's 
the Fargo and Ward City Council members that are all doing it together, the cast and play commissioners, um, you know, some of the other township uh, leaders, because um, I think actually physically being there is going to be um, more impactful than, like you said, just seeing it on the video even. Um, the only caveat would be that I, I want to ensure that um, our engineer cannot use it to springboard onto a bus operating position and you shouldn't be able to springboard into a podcast uh, phenomenon or a, an actor in a documentary series. So I think as long as we get those covered. He also drives the bus and wears a Gilligan hat. So he's multi-talented. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We need to make sure that those parameters are in place. But I think even a monthly um, tour, um, especially as people are needing to be educated on the fact that this is happening and this is this is already having significant building occurring in uh, South Fargo. You know, there Anyone is Anyone else have thoughts? Oh, this is Jake. It's a good idea. We can't do too much of that. Great idea. We, we can look at dates coming up. I know there is a, a you know, dates change at the construction site based on weather, but they, I believe they are looking at a first concrete pour at the wild rice structure, which is a, a major structure. And, you know, they have done a lot of digging, but they haven't poured concrete yet. I think on uh, October 16th is the date they're looking to do that. Um, might be nice to center it around sort of a big milestone activity there too. Obviously construction trucks don't love it when you have a bunch of people getting in the way. So we need to, you know, work, work very closely on those sort of things, but just an idea. Chairman uh, Olson, I have two additional things if there's no more comments on that subject. Okay, go ahead, Joel. Okay, real quick here. Um, just uh, in related to the bus tour, um, Chris Bakigard, our engineering director, would like to make himself available to the board members to give them a tour of the inlight or the wild rice control site. Uh, so we'll be sending out information to the board. Um, he's pretty flexible, um, so he can work around anyone's schedule, meet them out at the site, to give them a, a short tour and allow them to see the, the, the uh, activities um, at, at your pleasure. Uh, so there is that option as well. Um, and then the second item I wanted to just note was uh, we have an excellent uh, group of candidates for the communications director position, um, and we will be doing interviews next week uh, with the intent of having uh, an offer and a hire uh, by November 1st. Um, so we may have a new face at our meeting next month, so that's kind of exciting. Okay, any questions from our committee for Joel or Rocky or me? So going forward here on on putting a bus trip together, do you want a recommendation on this committee to, to do that or you'll just go off our suggestions and see what we can put together? I, I think a recommendation would be appropriate. I think I get resounding support for it. Um, but if there's any uh, uh, naysayers that you know certainly have an opportunity to voice a concern here, but uh, we can certainly uh, um, set that up, Roger. Well, hearing no uh, negatives to this bus uh, tour, I think you should go ahead and consider a recommendation from our outreach committee. All right, we'll make it, uh, we'll make it go. All right, thank you. Rocky, was there anything else on the agenda that you wanna talk nope. about? Nope, it looks like we're pushing up against the 3 p.m. next meeting, so yeah. I'm okay. All right, so I'll look for, was there any other comments or questions from the board? If not, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Jake moves. Okay, Jake moves. Uh, I think that's enough to say we're adjourned. <laughs>